Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We've got a beautiful one today. Uh, we've got Azana in the house. How are you doing, lady? Hi, I'm good. How are you? I'm awesome. I'm awesome. Uh, you know, um, you, you were raised, you were born in Chesterville. Mm -hmm. What was that like for you growing up in Chesterville? Chesterville was very nice. It was actually a very peaceful yeah. um, township. I know there's like crime everywhere. We also had crime, but like in general, yeah. in many it wasn't very noisy yeah. so we just had fun it was very peaceful it was a beautiful childhood growing up there and yeah. um, i i wasn't there most of the time because i was always at school yeah uh, i was schooling in westville okay i started at glenmore yeah. then westville so i wasn't there the reason why i wasn't there was because i was always at choir mm -hmm. if i wasn't at choir there was something called elite choir so i was there as well oh, oh. And then I I used to do cross country, yeah. and I always used to come back late, so yeah. I didn't really have like a lot of friends that in side, world, yeah. which was really sad because I felt like I wasn't included in some things mm. that were happening. I, it was very sad for me. Yeah. But when I grew older, then I got to know some of the girls. Yeah. So it was nice. I can't complain about it at all. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. You know, it, it's it's crazy because you know I look at what you've accomplished musically and i always wonder Bana, um, were you always aware of what you wanted to do i mean you were part of your quiet school but did you always know this was it for you oh yes i did i did always know from the beginning yeah i i think the the i start remember i remember things from the age of six. Oh wow so i i i remember telling myself oh, what i'm gonna sing yeah. and i'm gonna do whatever it takes to sing yeah. and i used to tell everyone would see me i what i mean when someone does something to me that i don't like i would tell them i'm gonna be famous yeah and i'm gonna sing i was so <laughs> full of myself yeah. so one day you're gonna regret it so i, I always like everyone knew would see oh my call mm -hmm. yeah Ula. um there was a time where my dad got like a, a Lyra uh, CD yeah. and I was obsessed with it. I knew like all the dance moves, oh, wow. I knew everything, I cut my hair just like her yeah. um, and it was really nice and then one day it got scratch and I started crying. Oh, man and yeah it was just really serious for me and then i realized that i also love writing yeah and i i would see a scholar in it if like we're, we're writing essays i would always be the top student when it comes to essays and songwriting and poetry and all of those things yeah and somehow that just worked to my advantage because in mm -hmm. so i i like to write i like to sing and now i'm a songwriter and singer you're literally living your dream i am and i'm so like grateful because i like in Denkulu to be able to do what you love yeah because like not everyone gets that chance and like for some people it even takes longer mm -hmm. and i know that i'm not where i want to be yeah but if like anything happens to me i can literally be like but i did what i wanted to do and i'm so grateful to god yeah for, for giving me this opportunity to to make music yeah and be able to like make a link living out of something that I love you yeah. know it's it's beautiful it's a blessing I mean you, you it's, a, it's kind of expected for you to, to move the way you're moving because you have a double selling double platinum selling single uh, <laughs> yeah so I guess you, you you're bound to feel as content and just, as you sound right yeah now. but like please walk us through that specific single uh, my love your love it's your love okay. yes your love um so your love was made it's actually like it was so natural making that song and it's crazy because a lot of artists say that about their biggest songs it's it's, it's things that they don't really have to think about yeah the most that just become so big and yeah. people appreciate it so i was sending a, a whatsapp text and i was like i can't wait to see you again and i think i got that message or the other way around mm. and then i translated it to zudu mm. and i went to the mic and said oh, oh, man. Man. and it was covert mm. when 
I think right after, I'm not sure, mm. there was COVID. Um, right after we dropped it or during, I'm not sure. Yeah. And because a lot of people had not been seeing each other, yeah. that thing, Ijahile, meant so much. Mm. So I can't wait to see you again. Some people were even losing their loved mm. ones. So that thing, Ijahile, to see you again, mm. made people so emotional. True. So it was just the perfect timing for me to come up in the industry yeah. and I wouldn't have done it any different. Um, it's, it, nothing is easy, yeah. but, but we're grateful. So it's a love song. Um, and then the favorite lyric I just saw the other day, mm -hmm. the most shared lyric in the song is, um, Gizogzalela. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and men love that so of much course. Oh yes, the they do yeah. <laughs> Whenever I'm performing it, I don't even sing it Because yeah, everyone goes crazy yeah. They're like, you so excited yeah. <laughs> Yes um, Yeah, and I, I, I think the reason why people Like that lyric so much Is because like We haven't even heard anyone else say that I don't think I've heard someone mm. say that so the songwriting was very beautiful yeah. in that song, yeah. Uh, the, I mean, I want to have a better grasp of like um, how you write that song to completion. Because mm -hmm. uh, you said you set it off with the text or whether mm. you're not sure if you receive it or you send it. Mm. But like just the overall process, how, do, how at what point do you start writing and at what point are you done? Uh, it was done or, it was probably done in less than an hour in less than 40 minutes yeah. even it was probably done in 30 minutes crazy yeah but but just yeah if we what it was for me was me being so in love and mm. me being like so happy and like knowing exactly what to say after i yeah. say i can't wait to see you again because it's something that i would tell you as my lover yeah. that i love so much so does that so. does that song is it like at imitating life that song is yeah. It, yeah you were actually in a relationship yes when you wrote the song. yes it definitely was a true story and yeah. i'm not afraid to say that anymore yeah. because i've realized that like a lot of people go through what artists go through because we people yeah, <laughs> yeah. so yes it was definitely a true story and it's how i felt and so I was being vulnerable, mm. showing people how I felt. Yeah. And I've learned to be more vulnerable with my art now more than ever. Yeah. Because sometimes you're scared, Duguti. People will know this about mm. me. People will know that I'm going through the most. But yeah. do you know how many people are going, going through, through the through most? A lot of people are going through like, the most. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. So most of the times when you hear my music, it's something that I've probably been through. Yeah. Yeah. That's really dope. Uh, did, did you sort of anticipate the reaction that you got from that song? Because obviously, yeah. uh, did, did you know it would be that big or did you think it would be that big? So when when we were about to drop the, the, the first singles and album, yeah. just like how we're about to drop my second album, yeah. I do not know what to expect, but I have... I manifest things and I, I, I know in the back of my head, I, I could call it even the outer ego, yeah, me, mm. knows that I'm not going to fail. Yeah. And I'm, I don't win all the time. Yeah. But like, before I do something, I have to believe in it first. Yeah. So I believed in, in it. The, in the song. Yo, I yeah. believed in the song. I believed in the album. I believe in these songs that are going to come out. So... I didn't know which one was gonna make it for me was mm. one of like introduce me to people yeah but I knew like there was a song that was gonna work for me because I felt like we can do this I had like the team was very beautiful mm. like we worked so hard with it um people put in their all I was like this is not for nothing yeah and I'm not here to suffer yeah. we will do it yeah boy so I kind of had hope. So when it happened, I was like, this is God showing up for me. Um, and I knew he was going to do it, but I didn't know how and when. Yeah. So I was kind of expecting people to love the music. Yeah. It's, it's interesting for me because you come across as someone who has always been confident with yourself. Is that something no. that you've always... Is that, is that <laughs> not the case? It took a lot of things for me to be able to even look confident yeah. or, or like speak the way that i speak now because like um 
I remember even performing yeah. when I was a child. My parents, I used to perform a dining room, yeah. and my parents would be like, "You don't perform like this when it comes to other people. Like if someone else comes in, mm. I'd become shy yeah. and I'd become scared." So they told me to stop singing and dancing in front of the TV until I learn how to be confident mm. and actually do it in front of the whole world. Gilunga mm. looking because it was always me just dancing and singing for my family and not everyone else. Yeah. It took years. Yeah. <laughs> it took years. Like even now, like I'm so impressed with myself being able to come to an interview and actually. Um, speak without shaking yeah that took years as well i remember when your love came out and i had interviews mm. and i would my hands would sweat oh, wow. and even now they, they are but like but it was worse like yeah. i would become so anxious i've yeah. dealt with anxiety for the longest time mm. i still have anxiety yeah you know so it's not easy as artists we go through a lot even in Jalo before I go to to perform and I see like a lot of people yeah. I do get anxious yeah. but I think the reason why I do the things the reason why I'm able to sit down here yeah. and speak is because of the love of the music like I love the music so much yeah. and I want to push it yeah. so and I'm working with people who want to see me go forward. Yeah. So it's not only about me, Gifella. Mm. I think of a lot of things and I'm like, you have to get over mm. this fear. When you perform, you have to perform very well because there's people yeah. who rooting are also, yes, yeah. who are rooting for you, who've also worked hard with mm. the music and want to be represented well. Mm. So it's, yeah, it's not easy. But I know that with time it becomes better and yeah. right now I can say I'm in a better place when it comes to my anxiety. Yeah. yeah. Um, it, it, I mean, you, you seem to have parents who are not the typical African parent because the typical African parent would not have been always comfortable with you wanting to pursue music and not some other academic qualification that yeah. leads you to a specific career. <laughs> how, how were you able to have those conversations with your parents to make them know but listen mm. and that's my thing i've gone through the most of my parents yeah. when it comes to my art and me singing yeah. my parents have always known that i'm going to be a singer yeah i remember i before i even went to university i was in the ufs yeah before I even went there, I told them that I might not finish school yeah. <laughs> because because I love singing and yeah. my mom would get shocked, like yeah. she would lose it. They'd yeah. be like, yo, my co nago said kali Because they wanted so much for me, you know, yeah. they've put a lot into my education and with the with the gener with their generation, um how to make a living is to work for someone else yeah. and by mm -hmm. and that's when you've made it in life yeah. but now they they it's hard for them to actually realize the good see so many people are making money out of even social media alone yeah. we have content creators influencers mm -hmm. like you can make money in so many ways yeah. and i'm not i'm not down talking school yeah uh, it's very useful. I I would say good time to find a school in, um, but just be careful to not do things to to impress abanya bantu and end up realizing that you actually don't want to be in that job. Yeah, and you feel like you're in prison. I think you should root for yourself before anyone else. So would see. I'm gonna try and make this work. Yeah. You know. Um, so yes, I've dealt with a lot when it comes to my parents. Mm. I was studying law. Yeah. And at first I thought I was interested in law. Yeah. <laughs> um, until I realized that I want to record my album. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was like, I want to record my album and I still want to finish law because I, I have things that I have planned to do yeah. with with, with like fusing it with industry like yeah. I'd, I'd really love to have like my own show where I'm wearing a robe one day mm -hmm. after I'm done with my stuff yeah. but right now honestly mm -hmm. I just finished recording my album yeah. I've had the time of my life I'm happy yeah um so I'm going with my own timing when it comes to school yeah and I decided to pause my studies and when I told my mom that she was like 
it was hard but yeah. she she was like but we can see that in Dwaki Apambi Lele Maya Pambi the Gege I got her again she was a good see it's gonna smell like it yeah yeah so it, it's not an easy thing to say yeah, or even open up about like yeah. I think if you had asked me that like a year ago yeah. or like five months ago I could have even lied mm. and said school is good mm-hmm yeah but how far had you gone with your law degree uh i was three years in wow even worse because it's just like how <laughs> yes. it? just one more year and uh, two, more years. two more years and you're almost there yeah two more years and then i was like i'm gonna pause this yeah and i want to record my album mm. if i have a place to stay in johannesburg and if i'm able to maneuver and do the things that i want yeah. then let me take this opportunity because in two years if i don't do what i'm supposed to do yeah. i might not be anywhere yeah with what i actually want to do because like let's not forget the music is beautiful but you have to release more yeah. like we just released to zalabantu now yeah. it had to be released and i have to release another song mm. i have to be consistent because i also come from a very long break so i i wasn't ready to take another long break yeah um getting your school in yeah. but i don't advise w- any you, of yeah. those <laughs> but were you worried about losing your momentum after the success you had with, and I and I single. feel I feel like I feel like we did because I had to go back to school. Okay. Yes. After when I dropped my album, I had to go back to Bloemfontein. I had to go back to school. Yeah. And I was worried. Mm. Um, but I I'm so grateful that the music that I do that we do, it it sounds very timeless. It is. So when your love comes on mm. in a gig people are still yeah. like shouting Going it's not like it. a song that went very viral yeah. and now when it comes on people are just annoyed you yeah. know do you get what i'm but saying but it, it did go i mean like you know i was um i don't know what is happening today mm. and right before my interview mm. i the song played mm. and one of my kids was like i know the song wow. you know it plays in the car yeah you know so and and i mean that's like a five-year-old so you know when you yeah. have a five-year-old who's able to recognize your song mm. it's it's just really mind-blowing yeah but i think maybe in the biggest scheme of things it just speaks to the quality of music that song is mm. because it's a song that is like a, that cuts across the board from an appeal point of view yes. like a five-year-old who thinks a great song i yeah. think it's a great song yeah older people think it's a great mm. song so maybe it's also reflective of just how quality a song mm. that is mm. you know I, I was just really mind blown yeah it's just very memorable that. yeah yeah that does yeah yes yeah. did, did, did that put pressure on you though because you know you've done this song yeah. and everyone is looking at you and saying so what's the second one mm. yeah um i think after my break after releasing yeah I, I think as an artist you do get scared especially yeah. if you never released a song before and now Nengoma Nengol yeah to your, oh okay are you a one hit wonder yeah, yeah. <laughs> do you have to deal with that um, those? I never really dealt with that because I had people who really supported me yeah like the team that I work with yeah and like the music that we make everyone has faith Uhuti, yeah. we always gonna be coming up with something that people can love yeah and it's all up to god's timing um so at first i did feel the pressure yeah until i started recording new music and again like, oh, you got this girl not that i got this yeah but i'm just doing what i love mm. <laughs> so um like it's gonna come yeah. when it's supposed to come again yeah what we need to just do yeah. is just keep going forward are you chasing hits like no. do, you rec- do you record music with the consciousness that listen I, record, I need another big one i record i record no i don't think of it like that i yeah. i record even if i was to make you listen to the stuff that we record we record literally anything yeah and not just anything obviously but like we do traditional music yeah we do soul we do r&b yeah um we do i'm a piano that yeah. i want to do home mm. and so in my head and as i know 
he hits his thing and and yeah. should say finally pumege pigwingo me fan and jengo your love yeah if that was the case then i would have only been doing afro pop mm. but because i like to express myself gain the yeah then we just do whatever whatever beat comes on if mm. i like it i'm like let's do it mm. Uh, if we want to do traditional music, we want to do music for movies, for example. Yeah. We are trying to submit our thingies, oh, wow. our our music to oh. to Shaga Zulu, oh, wow. and we're still trying to submit. So we're we're not really looking at it as in like a hit. That would be beautiful to yeah, have seventy course. hits, of course. Mm. But we look at music as like things that like something that we can use in different ways yeah. and um my 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 personal favorite genre is soul okay and you'll get that in the first song in my in my album Mikaku that's coming up yeah. Utando Luga Mama mm. that's what i i love the most Ukrula Zonki Zendo mm. so but I, I have a feeling that's not going to be the biggest song yeah. you know so we just but record. You, you, you never know yeah, you never you know. know. I said that because remember, Utando by Us Java. Yeah. You would never have, I mean, yeah. it, it doesn't come across Is as, it the that's, one that's doing well now? No, no, the one that, that he recorded on, on, on a Snap Mover album. Oh, okay. Utando Lunge Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, that yeah. Was, yeah, so when you listen to that song, you would not really at the top yeah. of your head think yeah. that's the song. Yeah. You know? Um, but, but you know, uh, true to form, uh, uh, just adding to what you're saying, I love how diverse you are, mm, you know, thanks. and I think the diversity you really pick it up when for me when you listen to Uhuru mm. with Sun El Musician mm. and when you listen to Your Love, exactly, it's two different songs, mm-hmm. but you kill it mm. on both sounds, you know. At some point, you can't even believe that this is the girl who the did the same girl, yeah, you know? and I think that's why the guys like working with me so much yeah. because they know that in studio, I'm never picky about doing anything, yeah. They literally, they like, I was recording with them poor wave, yeah. I think three weeks ago. Yeah. And he was like, I have a very weird beat. I was like, bring it on. Yeah. And we did such a dope song yeah. that um, most people wouldn't even believe Wuti, Wuti Nesti and yeah. Even him, Mpo, I'm like, oh, so you do this now. Yeah. Okay, let's do it. Yeah. So yeah, there's also a song called Ndiege Leni by Murder featuring Azana mm-hmm. that was like, me like the the me that people don't know yeah. because a lot of people know the zalabantu azana the your love azana yeah. but there's the crazy me that yeah. literally goes into studio and just goes crazy mm. i can shout and scream if i want to but i don't scream but like i just express myself in a very different way to what people know me for yeah so i'm very versatile yeah yeah it's it's hard to reconcile because you literally at 2000 yes you know? <laughs> so like you being at 2000 it's like hey, well, where do you where do you how do you connect with this sound because yeah. we're not expecting you to be yeah. listening to the music that you're listening yeah. to or recording the music that you're recording because yeah. i mean you're supposed to be listening to hip-hop and you know mm-hmm. all the bubble gum i'm, mm-hmm. a, I'm a, you know i don't know i'm not dissing but you're supposed to listen to hip-hop on my piano come <laughs> on and that's what the music you're doing mm-hmm. you know i mean especially for me when i listen to oh i'm just mm-hmm. like wow 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 you know it's it's just so much depth it's mm. just you really connect with it you know yeah um but like who who are your music influences growing up so the reason why is because of what people around me yeah. like what i've been exposed to yeah the people that i looked up to i had like a phase when i was like 16 17 18 yeah i had like a, a chakra hand phase mm. where I and it was so important for me to be the person that yeah. I am now yeah. because I'm not like a chakra hand phase for uh, chakra hand girl I'm I'm not at that phase now yeah but it you can see elements of it so I used to listen to Erica Badu mm. all the time oh wow um I used to listen to even Brenda Fassi. Yeah. Um, I still listen to Brenda Fassi now. Yeah. Cleo Soul. Um, who's this other girl? Um, Comfort and Indie Jenna and Jenna Aiko. Yeah. So I had like a phase where I listened to that kind of mm. music. 
and I would wear amadugu wear kanda, <laughs> and I would wear like very long skirts, yeah. and I was so like in touch with my spirituality, mm. and I was so happy. Yeah. So I think that's where the soul came from. Yeah. And then I I met the guys. Um, I bought Disciples of House, Claudia and Ken's a Sanal musician when I came here to Johannesburg. Yeah. And then they showed me house. Yeah. And I was like, nice, let's fuse this. Yeah. Let's try and see how we can be like chakra-ish, mm. um, soulful-ish, with like yeah. And we just gelled well. Yeah. And also the Uhuru came from a conversation we had before we even went to studio. Yeah. We were driving through Alex. Okay. And I was like, it's so not fair how yeah. other people are living. And then we call this so a freedom. Disparity. Yeah, and we call it to Uti Uguti. Yeah, well. we're free. Mm. But really, like after you tell us that we free as black people, did anything change that mm. much? Like and it was also inspired by the song um, mm. I think that was such a powerful, a powerful line song. Yes, yeah. and I was like, wow Like, it actually gave, it's giving me like chills now Even thinking mm. about it Because even the way she sang it was so mm. beautiful So I, I felt like um, Black people were, were really I, I, were, were not really it's we're not really free mm. if you really think about it there's like so many things that are aftermath of the apartheid mm. so we were speaking about that in the car yeah and i took a piece of paper and started writing in wow. the car so and i when we got into studio um the beat started and it was just so natural writing to it yeah and thinking of it now i didn't really and i don't think i think maybe other people might have realized because i was young i was 19. yeah i didn't realize the Wootsie, it was actually a serious song was, when you think was. about it yes I, I didn't know it came from a 19 year old yes. i didn't know it was a 19 year old yeah. singer on the song because when i first heard the song I didn't see the credits mm. on the song. I just could tell, okay, this sound like Sunny Musician. Sun Elf, um, but I didn't know yeah. it was a 19 year old yeah. singing that. And it's, it's just like really. Thinking mind about it now, yeah. now I'm 22. Yeah. And I'm like, Mako, mm. like, you, that, you actually did well. Yeah. Like, we're serious, mm-hmm. ne? Yeah, yeah. So sometimes we don't realize what we do until yeah. like, see, mm. that was beautiful. Yeah, I, I think it, it must be like a mind blowing thing when you do something like two years ago or whatever, and you still listen to it now and you're like, who, who was that person, mm. you know? It's, and that's that's how I feel every time I listen to the song. I listened to it before I came and I was just like, oh, like, um, it's just like that this level of depth is just on another level did you guys consciously decide to make it an animation video it was covered so you couldn't really be yeah there to show it. so the easiest way um and it was up to sun al so i think he thought that it was best that it be animation however i would have definitely made it like a music video yeah. with like fire yeah and like i want to destroying things oh my god and like <laughs> someone standing on top of a, a of a car yeah screaming mm. people like i would have I, 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 if it was up to me i was gonna make it a very chaotic music yeah. video very chaotic mm. i feel like the the animation was beautiful yeah and it did give justice to the music video True. it's just that i i am a very artistic person yeah. i wanted to scream mm. like i wanted to you and i got a new screamer yeah. <laughs> but yeah it was because it was COVID, so i understand yeah we wanted to push the song. True, yeah. and you were, you were not willing to wait until yeah. the momentum was mm. there. Uh, you know, uh, one of the things that I was just thinking about uh, when you're just sharing uh, these artists that you've worked with, like Osanel and so forth, it just it just got me wondering, man, how does a girl from KZN come to Jobek and you connect with these people? Like, how, how hard was that for you to find yourself in the same spaces as these highly accomplished uh, producers? First of all, I manifested it. Yeah. I manifested it. I remember being like, I belong in Johannesburg and I'm going to record music and I'm going to find a way to do it. Yeah. So when it comes, you, you, you become very strategic about it. Yeah. Like I had to lie and say that I was in Johannesburg when I wasn't, when Stan Al uh, finally spoke to me yeah. to take a bus. Yeah. 
overnight to yeah. be here because I didn't want to say I'm in bloom. Yeah. How, so how, when you, please walk me through the conversation. Yeah. So um, it all starts in a in because because I was performing for free um at campus because I was practicing how to perform, trying to get um over this anxiety of mine. Yeah. So I started performing. Uh, and then word came out like there was this girl called Azana who performs. So if you have like something happening at your race, just call her, and then I would come and I'd perform. And I was so scared, but I still did it. Yeah. <laughs> so um, somehow I met Sinom Solo. Yeah, I know Sinom. Yes, he was also in the University of the mm. Free State, and. <clears throat> The first time he said that he saw me and I didn't see him, they needed they one of the they had a performance and one of the girls didn't pitch up for the performance. Yeah. And then they called me last minute and I was like, any chance to have content of me performing, I'll definitely take. Yeah. So I go there and I perform with Sinom Solo without me actually noticing him, because wow. I didn't really like look mm. at the guys that much. We went into studio Ilendole. We went to stage on stage by Jali Piano mm. and then I just started singing and then I saw Sinom Solo for the first time I had performed with him but Angim mm. yeah. Nagang and then I saw I recognized him for the first time in a singing competition that we were both in yeah. and I was like this guy is good mm. I was like like I just saw like that he was special yeah. I was like wow I remember even what he was wearing he was wearing a jersey and it had like a lot of colors and I was like wow this sounds beautiful and he was there with his guitar mm. and um, after that I got into contact with him and he started uh, telling me to tag like big producers mm. which is something that I didn't do yeah. before I met on him on social media yes on social media because yeah. like I was posting like videos of me performing performing and singing all yeah. the time and he was like you should tag so and so and I said no and then I waited like a couple of weeks until I got the video that I thought was actually gonna be good enough mm. to tag someone mm. and um, I tagged Sun L and a few more people and Sun L loved the video and I was singing in my am Saki and then um, he DM'd me hey yeah and then i was like yes wow. this is the beginning yeah. of something that's going to be very beautiful and i knew it and i was then trying to like get ways while we were speaking to mm. get into Johan to come to johannesburg so yeah. i planned with my friend Nancy, anytime yeah, we go. Yes. Okay, sure. yes Luckily, I also was talking to Disciples of House and they mm. told me to come here. Oh, wow. So I had been here before and then I went back to Bloom. So when I came back the second time, I wasn't scared. Mm. And I remember him asking me, Uguti, where are you? Nati, I'm in Johannesburg. Mm. But you we said Bloom at yes. the point. And I made like, sure. You're not trying to play that figure. game of... I'm not. Yeah. So I took a, a, a bus. I came here, started recording. We recorded... A lot of beautiful songs yeah and i got to meet other people i got to meet taffy we did your love with taffy mm -hmm. who was there in studio with sun al yeah and we've been working a lot now taffy now mm -hmm. so it's just been like a really nice journey for me where i i i don't take the opportunities that i get for granted yeah. so whenever i get an opportunity that i think will serve me right i'll get up that's how mm. you get into contact with people mm. and hence why i'm working on my anxiety because like i i really want to meet up with more people yeah through speaking to them and mm. like not being scared because like sometimes anxiety mm. I could be sitting down looking at my phone mm. but I actually just wanted to speak to that producer yeah because I was looking at you I was like Azana can you see exactly yeah, that, because I, I, I yes yeah. but the anxiety mm. <laughs> yes yeah. yeah so you know I was just wondering at what point do your parents realize this is it? Like this is this thing is going mm -hmm. somewhere. At what point? It's when um, I think it's when they heard me on the radio. Yeah. 
I think like it it was just something that was very like oh we are pulling and pulling and this is a real thing. We are not going to high bow. So fair and jadi. And also when 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 my first music video came out yeah. and they saw me on TV, they were like, oh okay. Yeah. Like you serious about this thing? Yeah. So it was then, yeah. So uh, and when they got to hear that you you got nominated for summers or how did oh, they? Oh no, my that? parents don't know what summers are. Oh. Like man. they they abanenda mm. abanalezozi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I also didn't know that summers was like a big, a big thing in yeah. South Africa. So when I when I saw that we got nominated, I saw people being excited for me, and I was like, okay, so maybe this thing is big. Yeah. And maybe it cements me a good sense of music from Nandi. Which was beautiful, but my parents don't know that I'm a South African awards mm. wada wada. No, we yeah. don't know that. Yeah, but what what did that mean for you at a personal level, uh, getting that level of recognition? Yeah, on your first so effort to that. Yes, like we like it meant a lot to me when yeah. I actually realized it because a lot of people have worked many years yeah. to to get the things that I've gotten in such a short space of time. Yeah. And so, yeah, I was very grateful. I'm yeah. very happy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, how are you able to like deal with fame? Because obviously, you have really accomplished quite a lot at a young age. You know, how how do you navigate that level of success? The only time I feel like I, I might be famous is when I'm performing and I see Abandu who are singing my songs. But in your day to day life, I do mm. not feel like I'm famous. It doesn't really affect me at all. Mm. Besides, besides like doing like certain things on social media, like I won't like really uh, show or tell people about my personal life because people are very cruel on social media. Yeah. They only care when you're gone mm. in a way. That's when they like really like tune in and then say nice things about you but i'm careful about that yeah but besides that i don't feel like i'm famous at all yeah. i'm such a normal person and you said calling or seven sanji oh you treat this like nine to five no yeah Music is not a nine to five yeah. because I can choose when I want to be in studio. Mm. If I'm tired, then I'll say today I'll dedicate this day to social media only. Mm. So, but whenever I, if I wake up and it's 8 p.m. because I'm 4 p.m. Yeah. and I want to hit up my producer and be like, let's make a song now. Mm. And he's going to say yes. Then like, it's like... Being an artist is very, it goes with the flow, like, yeah, cool. Yeah. And your spirits also, if you're feeling spiritual one yeah. day and you want to make a very, like, meaningful spiritual song yeah. with the piano, it's just, you flow, Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How, how are you personally able to, like, interact with, like, you know, the ups and downs of, 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 of music you know just having a hit here and at a point you kind of recording music but you don't have as big a song mm. at a time how are you able to interact with those mm. ups and downs i haven't really felt the ups and downs because yeah. when i had oh your love Usando puma at a time when i was supposed to be really busy i couldn't even perform because of of covid yeah. and then after covid it was school and then after school, I was like, I have to come to Johannesburg to record. So I, I would say the m I've recorded the most last, I've, I, I've performed the most last year, mm. more than any other year, mm. because I was, I, I told myself, I'm going to open this space for the music alone. Yeah. So I, I haven't really had that like time where there was a big song and you just dropped your album and you're going everywhere yeah. no that time in guess cuts is a figure we couldn't do anything yeah it's so messed up yeah but yeah but now we're working towards other things we just dropped to zalabantu mm -hmm. which i realize is actually making us busier yeah so i would say now i'm starting to experience dropping a song and people are uh, receiving it and you getting like busier mm -hmm. So I would say I'm only experiencing that thing now, but I'm not familiar with it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, great, great. Um, so you also mentioned that you have an album that you'd like to drop this year. Please share a bit about like what you can expect from that kind of 
for that album from that album so ikaku is is the title of my second album um ikaku is a 10 track album which is a continuation of ingoma uh why do i say this so in ingoma we have songs such as ekoli and it's me basically saying because we want to make music yeah. and now I'm here in Johannesburg I'm making the music and I'm saying in Ika kugunzima ekoli kumnandi kota kugunzima but I'm grateful so you get to like like you get to hear the experiences that I've gone through here in Johannesburg through song um, for example Another example is the song Your Love and Utandulang and Bella, mm. where um, I had never experienced something disappointing when it came to love. And now, years later, I dropped my other album with new experiences, and I have songs such as Amapigo Ezono, where I am frustrated and I'm angry and I'm like, which you didn't see in the first album because yeah. I was a 19 year old who was so happy life was good yeah yes, life was, was no good drama. like I just I just came out of school yeah like I'm seeing a studio I come down you know You're living your dream really yes yeah. um now we have songs such as never be the same when Ubunzi Mangabutwala. um yeah and I'm very excited uh, specific about my experiences mm. now because I've learned to be very vulnerable with my music and yeah. not be afraid to mm. <clears throat> with my lyrics. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you're gonna ex- you're gonna get it this year. Yeah. It's it, like people have bugged me for the longest time for this album, but I really just wanted to make sure that it's the best work that we can produce. Yeah. And I really didn't want to put too much pressure on myself and then rush things and not be happy with them yeah so one thing that i can promise you is that you're gonna get it this year it's actually done Mm -hmm. what we're doing now is preparing to release it Mm -hmm. and there's a lot of things that come with that so ikaku coming this year Mm -hmm. okay the song that's out now is zalabantu and we're gonna put that in the album Uh, but yeah, Zalabantu is out now in the music video as well. Yeah. We also dropped a Haya remix. Uh, we dropped a, the, the song called Haya a year ago and it only caught fire through a remix oh, wow. recently now. Yeah. So we also shot Gosh visuals timing. for it. Yeah. yeah. It, it shows you that whatever you do is important, so you yeah. must take You're it like that. Seed. Yeah. yeah. So we shot visuals for that. They're also coming yeah. through. Please, soon. please break down Zalabantu for people <coughs> who might not understand this Zul. Yo, um, I've gotten that a lot. Yeah. I think I should post like a, a description video. Yeah. So Zalabantu is is a girl saying, um, go ekayagiti at home where I grew up and pay lobola. Ilobolo is is like a negotiate. It's it's where the uncles negotiate. I'm sure by us. For, mm. Yes. Sure by us. <laughs> I don't know how to explain that. Yeah. But yes, um, basically saying marry me, mm. um, because you love me so much. The first line says, mm. So many men have tried to get to me, but they can't because mm. you in my life and I only see you. Mm. And it says, you're going to marry me because I love you and I I, I feel like you fit for me. Yeah. That's basically what the song is saying. Oh, wow. You know, it's, it's crazy because when I was listening to it, I was like, this sounds a little bit like Maskandi. Is it yes, just me? Yes, yes. Shout out to Mfo Ami mm. who, who produced the song. Mm. I, I, I don't want to always do the same thing and yeah. I love everyone that I've worked with but this time I was like let's do something different yeah. and so Umfo Ami was just perfect for the job he works with a black diamond uh, a lot of songs in the industry that people know he's mm. uh, behind those yeah. so he gave us that Maskandi Afro pop vibe and fused it and yeah it made Zalabantu mm. Beautiful. Please give us uh, your five lessons that you have learned in your career so far. Um, 
you as an artist my call that's me must um always be prepared to push the music more than anyone i'm always like the way that i i when we drop a song for example yeah at 12 i'll be the first to download it mm. I don't care what to Benzani. I need to be the first person to post my music to download to make sure what I tell people about it because I need to have faith in the music more than anyone. Yeah. And so that's how you present something to people by showing them what you believe in it. Yeah. That's the first one because I think I remember there was this one time we dropped a song and I wasn't like I was like scared. I was like, "Oh." <laughs> But now looking back, yeah. I'm like, you need to go all in when yeah. you're an artist. Um, you need to push your stuff, even if you're not getting maybe the traction that you got from the last song. Yeah. You have to stay at it and believe in yourself. Yeah. Uh, the second lesson I've learned is respect. Respect yeah. everyone. Uh, life will humble you. Yeah. <laughs> and with this industry like there, there's highs and lows never look down on anyone else never think that you're better than anyone else yeah um yeah just Paband is so important in life in general yeah and with working with people as well the third one would probably be <clears throat> need to read books as an artist yeah. so that i can become better with my songwriting yeah. so um there was a point where i had a dictionary because i'm sick and tired of saying i love you in a song mm. so you want to say different mm. so as an artist i understand that we're not always opening books yeah. But you must treat it like in this serious. So mm. if you want to be better, we craft uh, fill yourself with knowledge. Yeah. Like, um, yeah, don't just be like in your studio and fly like a butterfly mm. and never know even the business side of things. It's mm. so important to know what you're getting into as an artist. Mm. That's the fourth one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the fifth one is i was actually thinking about this one yeah the other day and i was like i'm so sick and tired of waiting to be at a point where i want to be mm -hmm. what i need to do is just appreciate everything that i have that going on. the yeah. fact that i'm here in this interview and mm -hmm. someone's gonna listen to this interview till the end mm -hmm. And I'm gonna drop my album, mm -hmm. and I have a gig next week. Yeah, boy. Like it's just beautiful. Like sometimes the impilo fanelo velu be grateful instead of always being like I'm not happy What's that missing? we don't have six hits yet. Mm. You know, I'm not happy because mm. they will come if you keep doing what you've been doing. 100%. Um, you just have to be grateful for what God has given you, Jay, yeah. and just take your things seriously. Yeah, and be consistent. Pel. Yo, yeah. thank you so much for those um, for those gems. Till now, we're really proud of of you, and I think even more because you're young. So we see ourselves in you because you know yeah. to be able to have that level of success that you have with your music and still be as grounded as you are is, is a very rare thing to see. So we just thank really you. can't wait to see what you have in store for us this year. Thank you. Really I can't wait to share yeah. my music. I'm so excited. No, I think it's gonna be beautiful. It's gonna be <laughs> beautiful. You. Uh, what are your what are your what's your favorite songs? I mean, obviously your love is a big song, mm. but what's the what's your favorite song that you've recorded? My favorite song that I've recorded in my life mm. to date is Amapigo Ezono. It's in my second album. Yeah, it's Afrotech, and it's me just saying to say Ugandengizama reach out to you, trying to um, see something in us and you fail to see it. Wow. And it was just me going to studio and like healing myself from certain things that I have go that I had gone through at that time. Yeah. So it was so genuine. It was so natural. It was so real. Yeah. Um, I enjoyed 
recording it, it made me realize that I love my job yeah. and I love the fact that I'm a pigeon or no ikaku coming soon. Yo, yeah, I was just listening to you talk about the second album. It sounds like from the first album to the second album, so much happened. <laughs> so much happened yes. between those two albums. Yes, the dad. It almost the feels dad. like you were like a little girl, and now you're like a grown woman who's yes. just gone through yes. everything. It's, it's life that together. vibe, ne? Yeah, yes. it feels like it. <laughs> yes, it is that vibe. Yeah. It gives me that vibe as well. Yeah. Um. Also, like, I feel like the transition from Mingo Matui Gaku is is me trying to step into like my alter ego because yeah. I say Igaku. And like it's something that I've always wanted to do, even as a child. Yeah. And I wanted to like just show people what I can do, mm-hmm. even like with me performing. Like, yeah, I understand what simply in my journey is. I I'm at a point where I just want to like express myself. Mm-hmm. So this album, I definitely expressed myself. Yeah. Like. Yeah, it's beautiful. Thank you so much for gracing us. Thank you for and having just, me. You, you shared a lot of wisdom and we just can't wait to, to to hear the album. I think it's gonna be really dope. Thank you. All the best with with this year. Thank you. Thank you so much. Please follow me on social media. Please give us the handle. <laughs> on Instagram, I'm Azana Official. TikTok is Azana Official, um, Twitter Azana Official, and Facebook Azana. Please also subscribe to my new YouTube channel Azana. Is Love Azana you. music? Mwah. It's Azana. Just Azana. Yes. Okay, dope. Thank you so Shout. much. Cool. Thank you.